If you are watching this, you have probably seen the news about wildfires in LA. It has been heartbreaking to watch, and my heart goes out to anyone who is affected. Around 115 million Americans live in places with a high wildfire risk. But the good news is, there are steps we can take to give our homes and families a fighting chance. Let's talk about how you can make your house as fire resistant as possible, starting with your roof and siding. The first thing you need to know is fire resistant does not mean fireproof. No building material is completely fireproof. Everything will burn or have some kind of damage with enough time and heat. That being said, a lot of materials are fire resistant, which means they can slow down or even stop the spread of fire. The hard part is figuring out how fire resistant one material is compared to another. There are class A, B and C fire rating for roofing and siding products. Obviously, you want class A materials. The problem is, there are a ton of products in that category. Everything from treated wood shingles to concrete. Some of them perform better than others. If you want to know more about how the fire rating work, stick around for the next minute. If not, jump ahead to my material recommendations. To get a class A fire rating, a roofing product has to pass three tests. Together, these make up the ASTM E108 standard. The roof has to resist a gas flame turning on and off for at least 15 cycles, have a flame spread of no more than six feet and support a burning brand without failing. For siding, there's another set of tests known as ASTM E84. They measure how quickly flames spread and how much smoke they produce. To get a class A rating, the product must get a score lower than 25 out of 200. Finally, a test of building materials called ASTM E27 or 7 simulates wildfire. It's not as widely used and it's not necessary to get a class A rating. You can see how these ratings are helpful, but they don't tell you everything. So how do you pick the best product? Let's start with the roof. Here are top three fire resistant materials for sloped roofs. Number one is metal. It's not combustible, meaning it will not catch fire even with embers blown onto it. That's big because embers can cause up to 90% of wildfire damage. They can travel five miles ahead of an active fire. Another plus for metal is that it can handle extreme heat without failing. Still, has the highest melting point of all the options at 2500 degrees. For coastal areas, aluminum, copper or zinc will stand up to both salty air and wildfire. If you don't want to compromise on looks, metal can be made to look like shingles or slate. All of that being said, metal roofing is class A by assembly. That means you need an underlayment like GF VersaShield or Owings Corning Titanium to make the full roof system fire resistant. You may also need non-combustible gypsum decking like the dense deck. Double check with the metal manufacturer to see what they require. Number two is clay or concrete tiles. Like metal, these are not combustible materials. They're also dense and absorb heat, which slows down the spread of flames. The design of tile shingles allows for airflow underneath which stops heat transfer to your attic. Some people say tile is the best option for fire resistant, but here's why I put it second. Tile is usually more expensive than metal and it needs more maintenance. Cracks and chips can make it less effective against blown embers. Tile is also heavy and not all homes can support it. Still, clay or concrete are good options just to make sure you install bird stopping to prevent dry fuel buildup. Number three is class A asphalt shingles. They might not be as indestructible as metal or tile, but they're a more budget friendly option. Most premium architectural shingles have a class A rating. Just look for STM E108 testing in the product information. 
The granules on top of shingles give them service level fire resistance. They can also be treated with chemicals to help them withstand heat and flames. That being said, Asphalt shingles are not naturally combustible like metal or tile. They are petroleum-based, which is very flammable. That means granny loss, cracking, and wear can make them fail. The older your asphalt roof is, the less fire-resistant it is. Now, let's move on to siding. There are a lot of options with the Class A rating, but number one is stone. Both natural and manufactured stone are non-combustible. Materials like cement and granite have an extremely high melting point, around 2200 degrees. If you go with experienced installers, stone is a pretty low maintenance material. That being said, even veneer comes at premium cost. Stone is easily the most expensive option. If you're in a market to buy a home, I highly recommend looking for solid concrete or brick walls. If you're building your own, there are more affordable options. That brings me to number two, fiber cement siding. It's made from a mix of cement, sand, and wood fibers. If you're looking for affordable fire resistance, fiber cement is your best bet. It's not combustible and can handle direct flames without catching fire. Brands like James Hardy make it in all kinds of colors and designs. To keep fiber cement fire resistant, you may need to touch up the caulking from time to time. You should also install a non-combustible gypsum board behind it. It's important to know that fiber cement can release toxic dust when it's cut or sanded. To keep your home safe, you need to have an experienced installer, not a general contractor. Number three is metal siding. Like metal roofing, it's not combustible and will never catch fire. It's low maintenance and comes in tons of designs and options. It's not the cheapest option, but it's not the most expensive either. Now you might be wondering, why is metal roofing number one, but metal siding is number three? With a roof, your number one concern is blown embers and metal is a great at stopping them. If embers get into your vents or attic, you're going to have damage no matter what roof materials you have. With siding, both embers and active fire are a concern. It's lower in the building, which means it's closer to fuel sources. If metal is exposed to high heat for long periods, it can bend or dent. It's also more effective at transferring heat than stone or fiber cement. Both of these things can expose the more combustible materials inside your home. To make metal siding fully fire resistant, you should install a non-combustible gypsum board behind it. In some cases, this might be required by the siding manufacturer or your local fire code. Choosing the right roofing and siding materials is important, but it's just one part of making your home fire resistant. Experts recommend installing ember resistant metal vents and metal gutters. Windows should be multi-paint, tempered glass or fire resistant glass blocks. Window frames and cladding should be metal. Exterior doors should have a metal threshold and be made of non-combustible materials like metal or fiberglass. You should also create a defensible space around your home by removing flammable plants, furniture, and debris. Stone walls and pathways can stop flames from reaching your house. For a full list of fire resistance strategies, go to wildfireprepared.org. Comment below what's the best fireproof building material in your opinion or maybe in your area i read all of my comments and as always if you're looking for a contractor go check out directory.com the safest way to hire a contractor i'll see you guys in the next video